Hi, I'm Sue Connors from Bid Central, and I'm here with Warren Perks from BCCA. I'm Warren Perks with BC Construction Association. I'm the Bob's Provincial Administrator. Warren and I are going to take you through the must-have steps for submitting a bid on Bob's. So Warren, first question, how do I get help? How do I understand what to do with Bob's? Well, the place to start is to go to the login page for Bid Central and on that page you'll find a help guide and if you click on the help guide it takes you to a page that provides you with information about all the things that you want to know for bidding uh, on a Bob's project. Great, okay. There's always a lot of pressure on getting the bid submitted on time in that last 15 minutes. Do you have any recommendations on the process that we should take? Well one of the things that's on our help guide is uh, under the Bob's trade contractor section there's a Bob's submission checklist and it actually lays out a schedule for submission of a bid but there are some things that are really important in the process the bond and payment which are things that involve some online input of information and those are the things where we often see people stumbling with the submission of their bid so those are the kind of things that we think you should do in advance uh, we're going to talk uh, a little bit later about the bonds, but the payment piece, you can pay any time, and if for some reason or other you don't get your bid submitted, we will refund you your money. And so it's not a problem with, with doing that. The other thing that I'd have to recommend for people is prepare all of your bid, and as soon as you possibly can, put in a fake number and submit the bid just to make sure that it actually that it actually goes through. So do that as soon as you possibly can. And uh, on, the, uh, s uh, on the Bob's module page, you can withdraw your bid uh, at any time you want. It brings back the uh, draft form of your bid. You can make whatever amendments you want to, price, uh, whatever, and then resubmit finally. Okay. Those bids are not seen by anyone until after the closing time. We go through a, a bit of a, a quantity or quality check at that particular time to make sure there's no problems before we make the bids available to the general contractors. Good to know. So could you explain a little bit about the bonding process? Yes, so on the bid module page there's a bond application and that's where the process actually starts. And one of the things is that we people should know about this is that bond application is really a piece of information for them to submit to their surety company or their broker to provide them with information about the project. It's not something anybody's checking. If the surety representative is looking for information, they're going to contact you. There are some mandatory fields on that particular uh, form, but it's not something that anybody's checking to make sure you've done it correctly. So also on the bonding part of the, uh, of the submission is that there's some things that people should be aware of when they're doing the bonding process. Uh, they send the bond to the broker and the broker uploads the bond and then they, then they have to sign the bond. Uh, one of the things is that sometimes people stumble with who it is that's actually signing the bond. You can submit a bond with anybody's signature on it and fix it later if you run across problems. So it's not something we're checking. We're not checking to make sure that the person that's signing your bond is actually authorized to sign the bond. So if that becomes a stumbling block when you're submitting the bond, then uh, don't worry about it. Just get the bond submitted with some signature on it in some way. But as we mentioned earlier, it's ideally something you should be doing well in advance of the bid closing time. If you can. Excellent. Uh, you mentioned that there are areas that you need to pay for. Uh, could you explain what those are and where those are? So there's two things that you're required to pay for. In the bonding process, you're required to have the signature verified for the party that's signing the bond. So there's a payment that's required for that that goes through uh, an online process payment with a credit card. And then there's the bid submission that's also requires payment and also for the general contractors there's also payment for them receiving bids but you only have for a submission of a bid you only have two 
parts to it, the bond part and the bid part. Okay, and you mentioned, you know, together with the bonding and also uh, the payments, those are kind of the areas that you just have to really watch carefully and make sure that they're correct before submitting your bid. You mentioned doing a test bid. Uh, what happens if I do a test bid? How can I be assured that that's not going to actually go through as my real bid at a zero dollar amount? Well, as I said before, you can withdraw your bid at any time, but you can always see the bid you've submitted under bid history okay. on the bid module. If you go there and look, you can actually see what it is you've submitted. You should also receive, once you've submitted a bid, uh, an email from the system with the details of your bid. That email, sometimes we find people aren't getting them, they end up in their spam or their junk folder or whatever. If you're not getting it, you should perhaps go there and look for it, but that has all the information about the bid that you've submitted. But as I've said, any time up to closing time, you can withdraw that bid, and under the rules, you can withdraw that rule up to 24 hours prior to the general contractor's closing, with a fee, of course, at that particular stage. So it's, it discourages people from submitting a, a phony bid and then withdrawing it later is the idea behind that particular process. That makes sense. Now just to, it's 10 minutes before closing, I've actually finally submitted my actual bid. Um, I've been asked a few times by people, how can I again just be assured that I didn't mess up my price? Do well, I go back to that area? Yeah, again, going back to the, to the bid module, and checking your bid history to see whatever's there is the actual bid that you've submitted. Okay, so if you follow all of these rules, you should be able to get your bid submitted correctly and you're assured that it's going to be in in time. If I have any questions or I have any concerns about the Bob's rules and procedures, who do I call? We prefer if you initially call the regional associations and ask for help from the regional associations and if they're not able to help you, they will reach out to us or our service provider for help. But for rules, the Bob's Rules of Procedures help, they should contact me. I'm the person that has the knowledge of the Bob's Rules of Procedure. Excellent. And all of our contact information is on the bidcentral.ca website. Also, if you have any technical issues, you can contact us through there, or you can even just do a live chat off of bidcentral.ca, and we will be waiting and available, especially with the Bob's closing, to help you. Don't hesitate to call or contact us, and thank you so much, Warren. You're welcome. <laughs>